at the end of uh, Owen's career as a wrestler before you know before the accident happened, uh, a lot of people claim that he wasn't very happy and he was uh, still working for WWE basically to save enough money so he can retire. Uh, I think you were pr pretty close to Owen. I've heard that, you know. I, uh, I don't really believe that. I think he uh, maybe wasn't, you know, enthralled with the way they were using him, but um, he always seemed pretty, pretty happy. He, he was uh, stressed to some degree over that thing in Montreal as well, though, where him and Brett had, uh, Brett kind of, uh, you know, labeled him as a traitor or something for staying in the WWE after he had been screwed by Vince. And that seemed to be uh, bothering him. He was a pretty inherently decent person, and he felt bad that Brett, you know, uh, felt that way about him. But um, I don't think Owen's wife liked the wrestling too much, so she was probably, you know, wanting him to uh, get out. And I think she echoed that in her book too. But Owen, Owen actually loved the wrestling business. Uh, that, that part bothers me when I read that, where he sort of never did like it, or you know, he, he loved the uh, being in the ring, and he enjoyed uh, to be as good as he was. I think he you have to have had some passion. And, um, I think he quite liked it. I didn't. I never ever discerned that he was. Uh, looking to uh, get out of it, but unlike a lot of the others, he had saved a lot of it. He had saved most of his money, though. I think he was almost legendary for his cheapness, from what I'm told. He'd have, you know, uh, people picking him up in each town, and he'd be getting uh, duplicate receipts from other guys for rented cars and hotels, and even though if he wasn't staying at one and all like that. But, um, I think he really liked the business, though, and he uh, he seemed to really. Uh, always, whenever I spoke to him, he always seemed to be having fun, you know, and liked the uh, lifestyle and all. A lot of people in your family were asked uh, how they felt that Vince McMahon handled everything when 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 Owen had his accident. Uh, what what was your take on it? Do you do you, do you think Vince I should have finished that show? Vince, that night, you know, he called like about. Uh, two or three in the morning in uh, my dad's place. My parents had finally got to bed. But I was mostly pissed that they even had him up there in the first place. Uh, it was needless, you know. I said, you wouldn't have a damn Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky coming to the ring on a, you know, a cable or some damn thing. But um, I don't know, my dad and I, I, I was somewhat empathetic to Vince too, you know. I, you know, accidents happen sometimes, and you, uh, you know, I, I've seen things happen in the ring, and uh, a guy down there got hurt, or you know, you know, close calls every now and then, and you sort of heave a big sigh and say, "Geez, I'm, I'm glad they, you know, just doing high spots or whatever." And uh, so, I'm somewhat empathetic to Vince and pretty damn hard no matter what you do after he got killed, you know, uh, whether you have the show the next night or the, I think they should have called the show off, frankly, once they uh, learned that he died, you know, and I didn't see the pay-per-view that night, but um, it was probably pretty damn tough no matter what the hell, you know, they may have been in shock or I imagine it must have been uh, a really bizarre seen around there was so you've never even seen the footage no i've never ever even seen one second of footage of that night it sounds funny no it doesn't I, sound funny it's yeah it's, I mean, i've never had any great desire to but um it bothered me after i was as outspoken as anyone about vince and uh you know what he shouldn't have done and should have done that night and all and, and later on brett it, who was grinding his axe with Vince is all of a sudden making out like I was uh, maybe in bed with Vince or something, that, which uh, pissed me off when I was as candid and to Vince's face and to anyone else in the media about the whole thing. 
should never have happened in, uh, in, in no way, shape, or form that I try to uh, endorse. Uh, it sure as hell wasn't trying to, you know, do anything ass kissing or whatever to, you know, use it as a foot in the door, which is bullshit, you know. In the wake of that accident, uh, you could see how splintered the Hart family was. Martha had, you know, what she had to deal with and her kids and Brett, whether uh, he was grinding his own ax or he really felt the way that he did, it just seems there were a lot of, it seems like there were a lot of different Hart family really members in like different the, positions. The perfect storm or some damn thing. Uh, Part of the problem, uh, as you probably know, uh, Davey had left WWE after Montreal, him and Lightheart, uh, out of support for Brett, and Davey ended up getting screwed by Bischoff, and Lightheart did, and then Davey was having his drug problems and health problems, and he was in the hospital in uh, pretty rough shape. Uh, would have been about March of uh, 99 and Owen went up to see him and he had like a bad staph infection and uh, anyway Owen uh, had a long talk with Davey and uh, Davey asked Owen if he could get him back in with Vince and uh, so from what I was told Owen uh, you know kind of went to bat for Davey and uh, Davey was supposed to start back June 1st which uh, a real sad irony turned out to be the day after Owen's funeral. And um, so Davey started back and everyone knew that uh, he was going back and that Owen had been the one that had lined him up. But Brett was angry. Brett and Davey had some hate because of uh, Bischoff screwing uh, Davey and all like that. So Davey felt like Brett hadn't gone to bat for him. And uh, anyway, that weekend, Brett wrote this column about he saw a strange sight the other day, a dog rolling in excrement, and that reminded him of the British Bulldog going back to the WWE after Owen died. And, and uh, Davey was pretty fragile and had you know, was, it, it, a lot of issues already, and that seemed to be the uh, catalyst for him, you know, going back onto the drugs and ultimately ended up his uh, demise, you know. But there was a bunch of these little subplots going on there and uh, my dad, I think he told me that Vince had offered him a pretty substantial settlement the day of the funeral and uh, my dad said he had no desire to get involved in a long lawsuit and all like that. And didn't nothing that was going to accomplish wasn't going to bring him on back or wasn't going to, uh, you know, he had no desire and didn't serve any purpose, maybe for Vince to go to jail or whatever the hell, you know, was. But um, next day, uh, Brett and company kind of, you know, overruled that and uh, announced that they were suing the WWE for 500 mil and they were going to prove that it was, uh, you know, Vince had you know, maybe criminal negligence and blah, 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 and all the legal. And next thing you know, the whole family's kind of in this half assed civil war because uh, Davey was working for WWE at the time and he was now being cast as a traitor. And anyone that wasn't on that track where they were wanting to. Uh, you know, see Vince go to jail was also condemned as traitors and the whole family kind of got ripped apart and then my parents weren't saying what they were supposed to say in court and uh, the lawyers then tried to have my dad deemed uh, what they called mentally incompetent or he was senile or Alzheimer's or some bullshit which he was quite hurt by and it just kind of went into a big, uh, you know, a snowball of uh, animosity and it. it was primarily uh, you know, at the root of it all was Brett's animosity toward Vince which seemed to be predicated by the Montreal thing. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a real nightmare though.